So there's one thing about budget computers that people may underestimate or may just assume that they can't do, and that's game and stream at the same time. Well, I'm here to tell you a little bit differently. Hey everyone, Chris with Coalition Gaming, and I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit more about streaming on a budget. So, I've built a f several computers around $200 to $250, maybe between $200 and $300. If you guys want to see a build guide on that, it'll be linked right over here, except the video includes the use of a GTX 960, but with the advent of the RX 470s and 570s getting super cheap on eBay, that's the only change I would make. However, both configurations would support hardware encoding, aka NVENC or the AMD encoder, which is also known as VCE, which is also known as AMF. Either way, the newest version of OBS Studio has built-in support for the AMD encoder, which it didn't used to. You needed to get a plug-in before. However, Streamlabs OBS has a really good auto optimizer and also support for said encoder on AMD hardware. So we're gonna go over the configuration that you'll have to do in Streamlabs OBS to optimize your stuff for streaming with your AMD encoder or your NVIDIA encoder. But in this case, we're gonna be using a system with a Xeon W3565, which is also known as an i7-960. That is a first gen first gen core i series from like 2000 and i don't know nine maybe and uh, this processor i think is 3.2 gigahertz base with a 3.4 gigahertz single core turbo it's four cores eight thread we have eight gigs of ram and dual channel and an rx 570 four gigabyte card that is not particularly impressive specs for somebody who would say that they game and stream on the same computer but i'll go ahead and show you guys that it can do it and it can do it better than you think so let's get down to the computer and go over that real quick so here we are at the desktop on the budget computer let's go ahead and download streamlabs obs which is the simplest obs studio can do it but uh, figuring out the settings for it is a little more difficult i tried streaming with just regular obs studio and the amd encoder the games didn't perform as good. They still perform fine, they're acceptable, but with Streamlabs OBS and its auto optimizer, it ran better. So that's what I'm gonna recommend for you guys, especially for first time streamers, cause Streamlabs OBS has everything built in, which is nice. Not that I'm gonna be utilizing it that way for today's video, but first step, download Streamlabs OBS. So go to Google, google.com, and then just Streamlabs OBS download. You see the first result right there and then you see the option to download beta right there. Go ahead and click it, save it, and let's go. Download complete, let's go ahead and run it. After you click run though, it's pretty safe to just close your browser window. Make sure you click yes when that comes up. And we're gonna click agree, install, blah, 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 get it installed, do what you gotta do. And there it is, it's installed, it says run Streamlabs OBS when you finish, we're gonna do that. Click finish and let's launch it. Here it comes, Streamlabs OBS. So when you first launch Streamlabs OBS, that's when it asks you about the auto optimizer, except because I just reinstalled it. <laughs> Since I just reinstalled it, it just brought all my sources back and everything. So what I'm gonna do is this, show you guys this. In the settings, you see run auto optimizer. Now the auto optimizer will run on your first install, but if you haven't done it before, or if you have done it before, and it's not quite where you want it, just click it. Go into your setting and click Run Auto Optimizer. This is the screen that you guys will see on um, the first time you run it or if you just click it in the settings. So you just click Start under Optimize and it will detect everything. It'll do an internet connection test, a hardware test, figure out what's best for your system. And I think it's pretty reliable just to go with it. So let's let this run. Check that out. So it detected your location to probably pick a good server for uh, the account you have logged in with it. Uh, bandwidth test, that's your internet speed test, so it can set a bit rate. Testing the streaming encoder, it's probably going to look at your CPU versus your GPU. And uh, attempting stream, probably some little test that it does, and then it, it applies the settings, and then other general settings. We're going to hit next, and let's look at the settings real quick. So stream. This is where you want to log into your uh, streaming service or have a key in there. If you've logged into Twitch or YouTube, 
probably just Twitch with Streamlabs OBS, then this part would already be filled out for you. But if you want to do it manually, you're free to drop a key here. Output. This is where it did everything automatically. So output mode, it set it to simple, put your bitrate to 6000. I put my encoder as hardware, AMD. Um, audio bitrate should be set. You can play with that a little bit just to help. I lowered it down to 128 instead of, I think, like 196, which is what it had it at. And then uh, there you go. So then you want to also double check your video section. And it, my monitor is 1080p, so it says base canvas 1920 by 1080. Output scaled resolution is going to be 1280 by 720. And I'm not sure if it automatically configures this part, but this is somewhere where you guys really need to understand what's happening here. Output scaled resolution is what the stream is going to see. So 1280 by 720. 60 FPS is what it thought it can do, but the basic where you want to start is 30 FPS. And uh, downscale filter, you always want to use Laxos because it'll help look the best, I guess. It's not a big impact, so might as well just do it. So we're going to start at 720p, 30 FPS. Feel free to switch this to 60 at will and see how it works for you guys. But for the sake of the stream, we're starting it with 30. And that's really it as far as getting your stream configured. You don't really need to do a whole lot else. You're generally going to be okay. If you've logged into Twitch with Streamlabs OBS, you're ready. If you haven't, then you want to go into your output, or sorry, you want to go into stream on here, select your streaming service, put in your stream key, and then you're good to go. And so I have my sources already. There's a display capture source. Here's my browser sources, alerts and main overlay so you can see there so those are already set the C920 the webcam would go in this box right here that you see which you're not seeing it because it's being used by my recording software then I have my game capture sources PUBG Overwatch Fortnite Apex already added and that's it I can go live from there I just click the go live button right here So you can see my microphone is picking up inside of OBS you see it moving right there in the bars desktop audio is what the computer is going to be hearing and what everybody on stream is going to be hearing coming through your speakers or your headset so you can adjust that accordingly maybe lower it a little bit that way your voice is louder than your stream and then you're all set this is just one scene that I have set up you can go through and set up multiple scenes and then swap between them and they can all have different browser sources but one really important thing that everyone needs to always do when adding browser sources is go down here look at the properties I'm just double clicking my main browser source there and you see where it says shut down source and not visible make sure that's checked that will save you CPU resources at all times so make sure that's checked especially if you have a lot of scenes if you have multiple scenes you need to go through every single uh, browser source and any source that you have added and see if it says shut down source or not visible or like for the webcam here I'm gonna scroll down and uh, you see where it says um, deactivate when not showing same thing do that for everything check it boom deactivate when not showing that way when I switch between scenes it's not using resources in the background either and your gaming FPS stays high one thing about Streamlabs OBS is that you can create your own themes and your own uh, overlays and all that and that's probably right through here in the theme store and as that loads you'll see here uh, themes. So you can do it all within Streamlabs OBS which is really nice. I use Stream Elements primarily and that's why you guys saw here my main overlay and uh, my alert box because those are through Stream Elements. So you can use it however you want. Those are browser sources. I just added them that way. The way If you're going to be adding the built-in themes from Streamlabs OBS, it still works similarly as browser sources. So you need to be careful about how many you're doing. You want to avoid animated ones because those takes more resources. Just find something that's simple and something that works for you guys. And then customize from there. Let's get back to the main camera now. So there's the configuration. Let's talk about the results. I did a test stream on an alt account so I didn't have to worry about keeping anybody happy or interacting with chat or anything like this. It was more about testing it. We were streaming to Twitch and on top of that, we were streaming some popular titles. We had Apex Legends on deck. We had PUBG, Fortnite, and Overwatch. And I have to say, all the games did pretty well. Fortnite, I had to turn down to low in order to get really good FPS. And I saw it bouncing anywhere between 60 to like 100 plus, depending on the situation where I was. 
but it was smooth, which is important. It was smooth for me on the gaming end, and that which means that it's going to be smooth on the viewer's end. And arguably, the viewer's experience is a bit more important than the gamer's experience because, hey, what use is streaming if you chase all the viewers away because you have a graphically laggy stream, right? Anyways, so PUBG is the other game I had to crank everything down to low in order to stream at a really good FPS. Everything pretty much most of the time with PUBG stayed around 60 or higher and it made for, again, a smooth stream. I was able to play, it wasn't a big deal at all, using the AMD encoder on the RX 470. It's really nice. Apex Legends, surprisingly, I was able to do a little bit on medium, but in order to be more comfortable with it, I just lowered everything as low as possible and it ran fine. It looked fine and I, I got kills. It was an enjoyable experience yet again. And if it's enjoyable for me, again, it's going to be enjoyable for the viewer. So it's covering all the points here. And then we get to uh, what else? What am I missing? Overwatch. Overwatch awesome i think i ran that one on medium and the game ran great streamed great everything was great about it I even got play of the game in my match so it just goes to show you that it, it's not holding you back in order doing gaming and streaming on the same system you're not really sacrificing too much so obviously you can load down the computer with more stuff that will affect your fps performance i had it configured with two browser sources, which is roughly common. I had my stream elements main overlay and my stream elements alerts box. That's two browser sources. Browser sources are what's gonna eat up most of your CPU resources and memory resources when you're streaming from a single PC setup. So you gotta try to be a little light on those. One or two max and you'll be good. Also, the webcam, the C920 that I was using, the computer most of the time is going to be responsible for doing the decoding and encoding as far as the webcam is concerned. So the CPU will take a slight hit running your webcam. Don't have too many cameras plugged in and make sure you have a dedicated regular webcam used for that, like the C920. I tried it with an action cam as a webcam. If you guys want to see more on that kind of content, that'll be linked right up here. And for some reason, I think maybe it was too much for that i7-960 because it just, the webcam was slow. The processing was slow on it. So I'm thinking the decoding of it coming from something like that was a bit too much for, I don't know, maybe the USB port or maybe the CPU, something was holding it back. But I switched to a regular webcam and it was fine. So I uh, can't really complain. One thing to mention, I, I'm sure you guys are taking notice when I'm saying that I'm running the games at the lowest graphical settings possible or close to it. I have to say this is that professional streamers, big streamers, pro gamers, pro streamers, all them people, they run their games at the lowest settings. They probably even have tweaks going, anything that's allowed under if they're tournament rules or anything like that, but they have tweaks going to get even lower than low to make sure that they have the most FPS possible. So to run games on low, while you're gaming and streaming it's not an unusual thing it's not a sacrifice that that you're ultimately making especially when you're only spending two to three hundred dollars for your computer with all that being said I was actually a bit more impressed than I expected to be with this setup. The AMD encoder gets no love out there because NVENC and its new iteration and that of NVENC that works even better has been completely overshadowing it. The AMD RX series uses, I think, uh, Gen 3 AMF, uh, AMD Media Framework encoding on there, and Gen 3 is when it really starts to pick up and get better. Nobody really talks about it as much. It is a great alternative to NVENC if you can't get a GTX card, or even better, an RTX card. The graphic quality running 720p 30fps streaming was really just fine. It wasn't uh, macro blocky, it wasn't distorted or anything like that that you would assume with having not enough bit rate or not enough graphical processing or anything like that. It looked fine and a couple of people that I asked to watch said that it was perfectly enjoyable as is. 720p 30 was perfectly doable, perfectly acceptable for most people. You can probably get away with 720p 60 in less intensive games like Overwatch and maybe Fortnite. But, uh, and then you can just switch on the fly, just stop the stream, go into your video settings, switch it to 60, start the stream back up, or make sure you just do that before you start up, if you know what game you're gonna play. But 720p30 as the baseline, all good. Very impressed with this setup when it comes to that. Anyways, everybody, what do you use to stream? Do you have a two PC setup? Do you use OBS NDI? Do you use a capture card? Do you do it all in one? Do you do AMD encoder? Do you do NVENC? 
talk to me. Drop a comment down below. How do you guys stream? And uh, let's let's talk more about that. So if you like this video, make sure you click that like button. Subscribe. We always got more coming. We stream every Thursday, 8 p.m. Pacific. So make sure you stop in. That'll be here on YouTube and also on Twitch. Eventually, we'll switch to Twitch only. You know, neither here nor there. We can talk about that later. Come on down to the stream. Say hello. Join our Discord. We, we always have tech talk and stuff we can do in there. And follow us on our socials. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all linked down below. We'll see you guys in the next video. Actually, let's read the top comment from last week. So last week we put out a video on destroying a power supply, a power supply that Christopher Yee sold me as a matter of fact. It was bad, he didn't know it, I didn't know it, he rectified the situation, everything was all good. So I had a spare dead power supply lying around and we had some fun with it. So top comment comes from Holo SX Ope Boy. Mm. Yeah, he said, this is by far the best method Tech Yes City is over here trying to give it a Tech Yes clean with some WD-40. <laughs> well, I mean, different kind of cleaning, but you know what? He cleans it with WD-40, I'll clean it with a sledgehammer. Whatever works, right? Anyways, drop a comment down below. Maybe I'll see you guys and uh, comment on uh, bring it into the next video. So we'll see you in the next one. Bye.